Shalom, shalom, sisters. I want to give all honor and glory and praise to the Most High God of Israel. Call Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Bark the Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh be the name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai being His only begotten Son. So this lesson, first of all, Shabbat Shalom to those observing. Lord willing, it's a peaceful rest day for y'all. But this lesson I wanted to get into is going into what it means to be a light. And I wanted to get the strongest definition of light first. This is one of the definitions, but it reads to be or become light, shine, to shine, to become bright, to be illuminated, to give light, shine, to kindle light, lighten of the eyes, his law, etc., to make shine of the face. So with that, I'm going to bring out Matthew 5 and I'm going to start at verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all those that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father, which is in heaven. So us being that light glorifies the most high. Yahweh We got to be that light. So it says right here that Yahweh Shai said right here that we're the light of the world. So we can't hide our light. We can't, you know, just be righteous in secret, you know, and then when we out in the world, we're just doing what everybody else is doing. No, we got to be that light. So I'm going to get Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to get verse 23, and it reads, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. So this is what's considered to be light. The commandments, the laws, these are the light. So if we're saying that we're being a light, if we're striving to be a light, we got to keep the law, such commandments. We have to. They go hand in hand. Let me get 2 Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 22 and verse 29. And it reads, For thou art my lamp, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. The Lord is light. The Lord is light. So if we want to be that light, we got to strive and seek the Most High. We know you have Hashem Yahshai and the word are the same. According to John 1 and 1, and I'm going to pull it. I'm going to pull it. Mm-hmm. And it reads, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So it's the same. It's the same. If the Most High Yahweh Shai is light, and he's saying to keep the law, such commandments, because that's light. You know, everything is coming full circle. Everything's coming full circle. And if we want to be full of light, we got to be full of righteousness. Because we know righteousness comes from keeping the law such commandments. Let me get this in Esther. Okay, Esther chapter 8 and verse 16. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. So obviously I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but if you know if you're familiar with the book of Esther, then y'all know that our people were persecuted they were persecuted and esther came through and she was fasting and beseeching the most high and looking out for her nation and that was her being that light so we got to do the right thing esther did the right thing she was being that light we got to do the same thing and after everything was said and done you know staying steadfast you know keeping the laws of the commandments the lord had mercy upon us the Lord have mercy upon us and delivered us from our enemies. So I'll press the most high. So I get. But I also wanted to get this precept in Syrac. This precept in Syrac because just playing into what I said earlier, we don't want to be keeping being a light in private or being a light only around people in the truth. 
But when we around worldly friends, when we at work, we're not being that light. No, we got to be that light everywhere because the most high's eyes are in every place. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 23, and verse 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men, and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord are ten thousand times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men, and considering the most secret parts. So it's plain. We got to make sure that we're keeping that same energy, as they like to say. Outside the house, inside the house, at work, at school, all that. We got to keep that same energy. And I'm going to get into some good examples of being a light and some bad examples. Okay. Because it, it makes me think about moths. So if anybody's ever, you know, been, I guess, outside, don't matter if you're a country or city, but if you have a lamp, moths are going to fly to it. They're going to fly to it. It don't matter if they get burned, whatever. They don't care. But they flock to that light. They flock, flock you. They flock to that light. And that's how we need to be through the spirit. We need to be able to draw people near unto us. Just like I think Paul said, follow me for I can follow Christ. Let me see if I can find it. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So we 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 try to, you know, draw people into this faith because we know the end. We know the end is near. We know that we don't get right and we're not doing what we're supposed to do in these last days and it's over for us. So we're trying to draw people near unto the most high, Lord willing. Let me get the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let me get verse 12. And it reads, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. So we got to be an example of the believers. We don't want to be an example of the unbelievers. We want to be an example of the believers. So we got to be that light in our words, in the words of the Most High, in conversations that we have, in charity. We got to be an example. We got to be giving, you know, not selfish. We got to be, you know, as on fire as we can possibly be in the spirit, we got to be faithful and pure. These are the things that we can meditate on to be in the light. Going to be in the light. Okay, how can I be better at be, um, being more charitable? How can I be more faithful unto Yah Bashim Al Shai so it can show hourly so other brothers and sisters can be faithful and more charitable? And in the spirit and having more godly conversations and etc. And I'm gonna the book of Judah, chapter 8 and 24. And again, y'all can read these accounts. But I just wanted to bring these little precepts out just for us to meditate on what it means to truly be alike. And it reads, Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us. And the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. So we got to show an example. We got to show an example to others. People are depending on us, y'all. We got fam. Some of us got families. We got, you know, brothers, sisters in the truth, in the world, family. We, everybody in Israel, we're all depending on each other. So we got to keep this in mind. It's not always just about us. Us, us, us. No, it's not that. And we don't want to bring a shame to the Most High and to this faith. Let me get 2 Corinthians 6 and 3. And it reads, giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. So we, knowing that people dep depend on us, we don't want to bring shame to the Most High in this faith. We want to make sure that we're not giving offense in anything. So that's why, you know, we're trying to be more charitable. We're trying to be in the spirit more. We're trying to be more faithful. 
Because we don't want to bring no bad name to this truth. And that's truly being a light. And, of course, we know the best example. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai was a perfect example of how we should be when it pertains to trying to be that light. In the book of John, chapter 13 and verse 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. So just a little context. In this account, Yahweh Shai washed the disciples' feet. Now, how humble is that? How humble is that? That's how we got to be in the spirit. That's being a light. The Lord knew, okay, I'm over these people, but let me humble myself down just because that's just who he is he humbled himself down he washed their feet and was that example to be like hey we got to be like that unto each other we got to be like that unto each other and we know that the servant is no greater than his lord so this is this is beautiful stuff beautiful stuff we must be like this with each other y'all and i gotta get the classic first peter chapter 2 and verse 21 For even here unto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. So, again, Yahweh was that perfect example. He suffered for us, leaving us an example. He died for the Most High. He died for the Most High, died for us. He laid down his life. There's no great love. Let me get that. John 15 and 13, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So, Yahweh shall he lay down his life for us, all praise to the most high God. So this is another account of us being that light, being that light, you know, being there for one another, laying down your life for your brother or sister, you know, being there to give counsel, being there praying and fasting for your friends all that type of stuff is good examples of being a light and this stuff makes a significant difference in people's lives being a light just like how shy dying for us that made a significant difference in our life because now we have a chance to repent to be better servants and we would never have that if Yahweh shy didn't lay down his life for us and was that light and that perfect example for us let me get James chapter 5 and verse 10. Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. So we know that affliction comes in this truth. It comes in this truth. And just like the prophets of old, they're, they're a good example too. The prophets of old that kept the commandments, strive for this truth unto death. They endured persecution, affliction, and were being that light to their nation even back then. But even now that they're they're still being a light even after death, that's really being a light. You know, having that good name where people are still having a good report to say of you after you've already <sighs> left the earth. But kind, slacky y'all. But um, we gotta just meditate on these precepts because it's multiple accounts in the scriptures of our people, forefathers, foremothers, just being that light, being that good example, and reading these accounts. Our forefathers and foremothers that are being righteous, they are being that light, and. So, okay, y'all, let me get this precept. I gotta get the classic. Mm-hmm. 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 The book of Acts, chapter 14, and verse 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must 
through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Plain. That's the classic. Through much tribulation, we gotta enter the, we're going to enter into the kingdom of God. Most high willing. So, that's being a light as well. Exhorting each other to continue in the faith. Sis, don't fall out. It's true. Keep going. You're stronger than you think. Just lean on the most high. Cast your burdens unto him. That's being a light. That's being a light. That's how we got to be. And we get second, second Maccabees, chapter 6. You have the mighty forefather, Eleazar, laid down his life. I'm going to start at verse 28. Y'all can read this in y'all's own time. And leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy laws. And when he has said these words, immediately he went to the torment. They that led him, changing the good will, they bear him a little before into hatred, because the foresaid speeches proceeded as they thought from a desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is manifest unto the Lord that hath the holy knowledge, that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body from being by being beaten to lock in. But in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble cor courage, Slavia, and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. So Eleazar is that light, and he's still that light to this day because we're reverencing, Slavia, referencing. This account to this day. Eliezer had already passed away. You know, he don't his spirit went up to the third heaven, and we're still talking about this mighty, mighty, mighty account that he did before he passed. That's being the light. That's encouraging us to be like, okay, we gotta die for this truth. We gotta die for this faith. We gotta do what we gotta do to keep these lost action commandments, these holy laws. We gotta fight courageously for them. No matter we young, old. Whatever. I'm going to get started right. Uh, 44 and verse 16. And it reads, Enoch pleased the Lord and was translated, being an example of repentance unto all generations. To all generations. And we know that Enoch was perfect. Enoch was perfect. And... <laughs> He was an example to us. Again, he didn't already went into the third heaven, all, but he's still that example, that light unto us, unto all generations. And that's, you know, we still generating. So that's us. That's still us. So I'll praise the most high for that. I'm going to get Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 11. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. So we don't want to fall into the same example of unbelief. That's those wicked people who don't believe in the Most High. They don't want to, you know, want to do right, follow all such commandments. They want to follow after the lust of the flesh. That's not being alike. But us being a light, us keeping these commandments and doing right and being charitable and being in the spirit, all these things that are of the most high, that's labor. And we know that the most high is not going to forget our righteousness. And when we do these things, we're setting ourselves up for that rest, that rest being in the kingdom. And we saw him. When we put in the work now, we're going to reap those rewards later. Be ye not weary and well-doing. Hold on, let me get it. Instead of trying to paraphrase it, let me just get it. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary and well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. It's plain. Okay. I want to give Wisdom of Solomon too. Wisdom of Solomon. Like I said, it's not going to be a long video, but 
I just wanted to bring this out to y'all. No one was edifying to y'all as it was to me. And it reads, when it is present, men take example at it. And when it is gone, they desire it. It weareth a crown and triumpheth forever. Having gotten the victory, striving for undefiled rewards. When that righteous example is shown and displayed to others, people hearken to it. So I feel. But huh? Slacky up. Gotta crank your baby. But. Con, when that righteous example is shown and displayed to others, people will hearken to it. You know, not of course everybody's not gonna hearken to it, but those who are gonna hearken to it, gonna hearken to it, and it's gonna help tremendously. And our people that are lost, who are truly craving the truth, but just haven't received it yet, they cr they crave that light. They crave that light, and even being in this truth, you know, you might be a sister alone, you don't know that many people in the truth in your city, whatever the case may be. You know, you're striving for perfection. We crave to be around that light of righteousness. We crave it. At least we should. And being that light gets us the victory and a reward that is undefiled, most high willing, which is the kingdom. And we know that there's multiple bad examples. There's multiple bad examples in the scriptures. As well as there's multiple good ones, too. But you got the Pharisees. I'm talking about the Pharisees. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, forefathers, you know, when our forefathers were in the wilderness after we left Egypt, you know, they was tripping, tripping. And that's a bad example because I got to show you all the good examples, the things that we got to follow after, and we got to show the bad, the things we got to avoid. So I'm going to get 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse, start at verse 6. I'm going to go all the way to 10. Now, these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. And we know that the Pharisees. Why do I keep saying that? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. I don't know why I keep trying to combine those. They tempted Christ multiple. It's multiple. I was going to say hundreds. But multiple times. I mean back to back to back. All throughout the gospel. You got Pharisees tempting the Lord tempting the lord questioning him trying to challenge him about the law the whole time this man is perfect but that's what i said but come and let me read 10 neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer so it's plain. It's plain. That's not how we want to be. We don't want to be murmurs. We don't want to be murmurs. And some of them murmur. We don't want to tempt Christ. Or definitely don't want to be idolaters. All of this stuff. All of this stuff is bad examples. Bad examples. This is not being a light. Playing in the idolatry, you know, always putting something before the most high. That's not being a light. Lusting after evil things and, you know, trying to just chase a bag 24-7, but you, you're not even thinking about the most high. No, that, no, that's being a bad example of being a light. And I'm going to get I'm gonna get some more precepts on that. I'm going to get some more precepts on that. Because you got the fornicators that, you know, that's. Solomon and Gomorrah all day. Jude 1 and 7. Even as Solomon and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth 
for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's plain. Solomon Gomorrah, if you haven't read it, read it. But these men were very, very, very wicked. Lots of fornication, lots of just lust and just nastiness. And those people were were an example for us not to be like that unless we want that vengeance of eternal fire. So, I'm going to get another preach up and going into um just the wickedness. The wickedness and being a bad example, that's it, it's hand in hand. Because if you're not being wicked, then you're going to be a light. So I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, I, I, sorry, I said one more, but I'm gonna get two more. I'm gonna get Matthew 23, cause I gotta show y'all about these Pharisees. Matthew 23, and I'm gonna read 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in so this is woe unto you woe unto you I mean, we know woe means death death unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites so being a hypocrite is not being a light you're not being a light if you're oh yeah sis you got to be doing this and that the whole time you're going off like that's not pleasing in the sight of the lord it's not pleasing in the sight of the lord because you're shutting up the kingdom against men but you're not going in yourself because you're a hypocrite. You're being a hypocrite. And that's not being a light. And the Pharisees, if y'all read the Gospels, y'all know they're very, very prideful. Very, very just evil. The audacity that they had. And they're only righteous outwardly. But the inside is filthy. Let me get that. Luke 11. Let me get verse 39. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but your inward part is full of ravening and wickedness. So Pharisees are like that dirty cup. That dirty cup, you don't put whatever substance in there. You pour it out. You still got all that residue up in there. You know, took the, the cup to the sink. <laughs> took the cup to the sink. Washed the outside of the cup. And now you're trying to give it to somebody else. They're going to be like, bro, what is this? It's not even clean. And ultimately, we don't want the most high to be like that with us. We don't want to be given to the most high. And he's like, dang, look at the inside of this. This is nasty. I don't want this. And throw this away. We don't want the Lord to be like that with us. So we got to be that light. We got to be righteous and do right. And I want to get into how the most high is that light and how he has a light countenance. So, when we do things pleasing to him, he shows favor unto us and gives us his countenance or his presence, as you want to say, of light. He gives that, us that presence of light. And let me get the book of Psalms. Psalms has so many gems. So many gems, man. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 6. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. So this is something that we can ask the Most High. Baba Kasha, Yahweh Shemir Shai. Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. More than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. Verse 7. So... The Most High is the one that gives us that light. He gives us that light. Satan is not giving you any light. Let me tell you that right now. He's giving you wickedness. He wants you to fall away from the Most High and do wickedly and lead others into wickedness. That's not our goal. We want the Most High to lift up life as countenance unto us. And we get Psalms chapter 44 and verse 3. For they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. 
but thy right hand and thine arm and the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor unto them. So the most high shows us favor, but it's only, only because of the most high's mercy. It's only because of the most high's mercy. And that's what we got to ask for. We got to ask for mercy. We got to ask that the most high show, puts the light of his countenance on to us so that we can be saved, so that we can be preserved unto his kingdom, most high willing. And we can be delivered from the hands of our enemies, most high willing. And I'm going to get Proverbs 16 and 5. Slakia 16 and 15. And it reads, And the light of the king's countenance is life. And his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. So, we know that king. That king is Yahweh Shem Shai. That king is Yahweh Shem Shai. In this context, in this lesson, this is Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. In the light of the king's countenance is life. So, in the light of the Most High Yahweh Hashem Yahushai's countenance is life. We know that he's life. He has the words of life that he's given unto us to read, to meditate on. And his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. So... All praise the Most High for that. All praise the Most High God. And the Most High is the only one that can bring us to that light. Ultimately. He's the one who can bring us out of darkness. Let me get that in Job chapter 33. Let me jump 28. Verse 28. He will deliver his soul from going into the pit. And his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things worketh the Most High. Oftentimes with man to bring back his soul from the pit to be enlightened with the light of the living. So all praise the most high that he's delivered our soul from going into the pit. And we're so, 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 so blessed. We're just so blessed that the most high has brought our soul back from the pit and that we're now enlightened. And now our life is full of light, most high willing. So call all your help out to me. I'll try for all that. He's done for us and bringing us into this faith. And I'm going to get my closing precepts. This one's going to be too long, y'all, but I'm going to get Sarak 27. It's so lucky not 27, 25, and 17. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. So, we got to fix our face. This is just the last point I wanted to bring out. But we got to fix our face, ladies. We got to fix our face in our presence. Our demeanor and the way that we do things, the way that, you know, the attitudes and all that, the way we have our face, oftentimes, don't be giving off light. It don't be giving off light. Like, our presence can either bring darkness to a room or light to a room it's up to us and that's ultimately something we got to pray on that the most high again puts his light countenance on us but we got to have that light countenance most high willing not a dark one and if our countenance is constantly or easily changed from being light to dark then eventually we'll be moving in a spirit of wickedness We'll be moving in the spirit of wickedness. We can't be double-minded in this thing. Oh, you know, today I'm going to have a light countenance. And tomorrow, you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. No, you, we don't get to choose when we want to be a light. No, this is a constant thing. When we count the cost and we say, okay, Lord, uh, I'm going to serve you. I'll give my life unto you. I'm trusting in you and your perfect will. I want the kingdom. All these good things. We got to move in that spirit of being a light all day every day as much as we possibly can because we're gonna get that undefiled reward but i love y'all so 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 much call y'all about shimmy all shy lord willing this was edifying for y'all and so lucky for the interruptions but lord willing y'all had a beautiful 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 blessed sabbath and shalom